What's going on? Play Game here back with another Epic 7 video. And today we're testing out the brand new Fire Ranger Elegotes in Epic 7. So we're bringing them into a controlled environment. We have, uh, of course, some speed contesters playing alongside him. So, of course, with our testing, we're going to try them out in an area where, you know, we have everything or we try to put everything to go in our favor. So that way we can kind of showcase him to his max potential, right? Uh, but for the most part, he is quite a bit of fun. Uh, just keep in mind, he is one of those units that is going to require a cleave or aggro playstyle. So you are going to have to pair him up with very fast units if he is not a very, very fast unit on your team already. And so my Elagos isn't insanely fast. He's about 260, 265 speed. So not insanely fast. You can actually build him 300 plus speed, uh, but that is gonna require insane amount of gear. Now that 300 speed gear, you could easily put that on another speed opener. So just to give you kind of an idea, he needs similar gear to Ran. So the way that Ran is usually built, that fast 300 plus, that's what you ideally want on your Elegos if if you are at a very high level right if you're playing rta but for arena you can kind of build units however you want that's another reason why we kind of like to play arena with new units but as you can see every single match we have to bring in zeo because we have to guarantee ourselves first turn and so you'll see here we do hit that ran so that we that way we can try to follow up right after that so you want to be i would say within like 10 to 15 speed maybe uh off from your opener unit right because you want your opener which here is zeo to silence push back and then you can soul burn your elegos defense break and push back and then whoever follows up right after that has to be just as fast so that he can potentially get the kill and then Elegos will proc his briefcase. And so uh, there are a few issues with that. Uh, one of that is that he is a fire ranger. So he does suffer from element disadvantage, right? So you'll see in a few fights, uh, the unit that has the highest attack is Rem, right? So you're gonna end up hitting some water units on defense, mainly Rem, right? Cause she's always on defense. That has the highest attack so there is a chance of him missing that briefcase which can do a lot of damage now uh keep in mind that if you do end up fighting teams like this like the one that you see in front of you here where you have bellion where you have rem uh you got no souls and you got a potential to instant lose from the counters because everyone on your side is glass cannon right everyone on your side is gonna have to be built on speed and attack crit damage, right? Glass cannon builds in order for you to be able to get kills and kind of snowball that briefcase into another unit. So you'll see here, we do end up hitting that Aiden, uh, but uh, it's pretty much GG for us because we, it's tough to have another unit that is also fast, that can get a kill on their S3, and potentially cut. So we did put him on Sash uh, instead of Guiding Light for this one because we need a CR pusher. We need that little bit of push when we get killed so we can start snowballing. But you'll see this one. Uh, this one was a rip because that Landy was insane speed Landy and she cut us and we did not get any kills. But uh, you'll see here that he does work really, really well with Zeo. Uh, I think in RTA, it's gonna be very, very similar, right? You're gonna wanna first pick Zero and then potentially him as a second pick. But if you do that, you're gonna have to guarantee that you don't get outsped, right? Because after Zeo goes, you have to follow up with Elico. So that has to be kind of like the second unit that hits so that again, you can hit him with the defense break uh, and then whatever unit follows up after that can actually get a kill. Uh, that defense break is huge. You'll see it on this Rimuru here. Uh, putting, up, putting him up against Rimuru is actually really really nice because it pushes him really far back up to i think it's 50 percent pushback and uh, that actually pushes him back enough to where he's not going to cut your dps 
and you can just finish off the rest of the team. But uh, I don't think we ever dual attack because Elego's S1 uh, can actually proc a dual attack. Uh, from I think it's from the unit with the highest attack. So by the time we actually get to S1 with Elego's, we pretty much won. We either won or we lost already, right? So uh, I don't know about his S1. I think it's just meant to like clean things up, right? So nickname the cleaner. Uh, we have the closer. Now we have the cleaner, right? So he's meant to just like clean things up. But uh, I mean, for the most part, he's been uh, quite a bit of fun, uh, even though I didn't build him 300 speed, right? Because that does take quite a bit of gear. So uh, I think that's going to be uh, one of his downfalls to a lot of people being able to actually use him uh, in PVP, in RTA, right? Uh, he does need quite a bit of really good gear in order to uh, to make him work at his full potential. All right, so here he is, Elegos. Uh, we do have him at 265 speed, 270 crit damage, and about 3.5k attack. We do have him built on a speed pen build. I'm pretty sure you can get him a lot higher if you give him way, way better gear. Uh, but like I mentioned before, uh, you're gonna want him to be able to speed contest because uh, you do want him to go first so that he can hit with the S3. Now, the great thing about his S3 is that it can soul burn or be soul burned uh, to ignore effect resistance. And this actually strips two buffs before inflicting target and decreased defense for two turns. And it also decreases combat readiness by 50%. So it's a 50% CR pushback, like I mentioned, hitting a Rimuru really allows you to continue the clean. And so that, even though doesn't do an insane amount of damage, uh, is still going to open up for whoever goes after him to get a kill, giving Elagos the ability to hit with his cleaner ability. So the cleaner, right? Uh, he does hit you with a briefcase. He does get perception which increases his critical hit chance and critical hit damage by 15 percent uh, and he also gets an attack buff. Uh, so this can potentially deal a lot of damage uh, this scales off of speed and can increase damage though proportional to the difference in speed up to a maximum of 200 percent so it can deal a big chunk of damage now the thing that i ran into is it does attack the enemy with a bomb uh, but this attacks the enemy with the highest attack. And so if you're facing water element units, right? I mentioned Rem. She's going to be the unit with the highest attack on like those tank type of defenses, right? Uh, because everyone else is a tank. So she's going to have the highest attack. So he has elemental disadvantage against that. Uh, but I think in RTA, you might be able to position him a little bit better uh, to kind of hit very, very squishy units so he can actually get a kill with his S2. I mean, I guess you could always put him on symbol, right? To uh, to give yourself more of a chance to actually land a kill on like, water units. So I noticed that the perception activates after the hit. So he gets perception after he's already hit. So I don't, maybe that was just me, but uh, for some reason I feel like it, you should get perception before you hit with the cleaner, right? So that you have that increase in critical hit chance and critical hit damage. Uh, but I mean, you still got the S1. When you do have perception, uh, you can bring in the unit, the unit with the highest attack. So you get a dual attack from that unit. Uh, so he is going to be a unit that is needed to be plus 15. Uh, he is a 100% cash unit because the better gear you can give him, the better he's going to do. If you can get imprints for him, it's going to be one of the best imprints in the game aside from speed. And that's critical hit chance. He can get up to 16.8% in free crit chance. So you could technically build him uh, just from imprints at 85 crit chance, right? 84 crit chance, uh, depending on how your rolls are. But uh, that is gonna give you 100% crit. Now just keep in mind, you could even build him with even less crit chance, right? Uh, because he does have a crit chance buff by 15% through perception. So. Uh, there are quite a bit of ways that you can maximize your return on this unit, and that is through damage, that is through imprints, that is through the buffs that he gets. But overall, he is quite a bit of fun. Uh, we do have him graced, uh, and, you know, I don't think he's going to be an insane meta unit. 
uh, because he does require a lot of gear, very, very good gear to build. And I don't think that a lot of players actually have the kind of gear that you need in order to run him efficiently and effectively, not only in PVP, uh, but alongside other units that also need to be around the same speed. So let me know how you fare with him. Uh, we might be able to test him out in GVG and maybe some RTA, we'll see. Uh, but you know, for the most part, we might leave him grace to kind of continue playing around with him. But let me know your experience with him. What's your build look like? You know, how fast are you running him? Let me know in the comment section below. Like always, you haven't enjoyed the video, hit that like button if you haven't subscribed. Hey, think about subscribing. It really helps the channel go and reach more people like you who like content like this. Like always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.